What a blessing to see you, friends. Very encouraged by your faith and devotion to the Lord that has brought you out on this first day of the week to offer to the Lord and to start this week right by seeking Him first. And I commend you for your devotion. One of the things I really appreciate about our service is how it is available online and on YouTube we can actually watch the entire service and this morning's service would be one worthy of going back and listening to again because of the good things that have been said and the good things that have been sung and offered up to our Lord and because it's not always easy to stay focused in worship we get distracted and we sometimes lose our train of thought but I believe that if we would go back and listen to what was said this morning, we would be enriched for doing so. I will encourage you to come back tonight. If you're able, we're going to do one of those sermons where we have songs throughout the sermon to enhance the thoughts. And Brother John Lindsay's going to help me in that. He's going to lead some singing for us during tonight's lesson. So I encourage you to come back for that. We do sing a song that has a really good thought to it that I'd like to consider this morning. And it's the song where I'm just going to read it to you. Saints lift your voices. There is none like him, none can compare. No God his equal, no prince his heir. Have you not known him? Have you not heard? God is creator of all the earth. Some will grow, grow weary, sin they'll pursue, servants of God, their power he'll renew. Lift up your eyes and see his great might, soar like an eagle on wings of flight. Saints, lift your voices, though dark the days, lift up your spirits, sing out his praise. Upward the calling, brighter the light, soaring like eagles on wings of flight. I know you know that song, and I know you've sung that song. It's a good song. But it should intrigue us how often the eagle is referred to in the Word of God. Would it impress you to know that of all the times that this bird is mentioned in the Bible, some 33 times, I believe, only two of those occasions is it actually referring to the physical, actual bird. Most of the time when the Bible refers to the eagle, it's going to be symbolically or in reference to some feature of the eagle. In other words, the majority of God's references to this bird is to some quality that's true about this bird that will be true also in our relationship with him. Profound, really profound if you think about it, in looking at the eagle. And there's a lot about the eagle that can impress us, many things, just a few is just the size in comparison to other birds. How many eagles have up to a seven foot wingspan, which is tremendous. That's tall, that's wider than you are tall. Tremendous size of a bird. The eagle is able to see things that you and I cannot see on a much greater scale. I mean, if you were to spot something right in front of you right now, maybe three, five feet away that you can see in detail, like this here, I can see the, the fine detail of the grain of wood on this pulpit. Well, imagine being able to see that detail 100, 100 feet away. And that, that's the strength of the eagle's eye. We make reference to the eagle eye and how the, the clarity, the strength of vision is there, which is tremendous. And then you have just the sheer strength of this bird. I, you know, you can look it up and you can just look up, research, the ability for eagles to carry away other animals, big animals. I, I don't know if it's real or not, but I've seen pictures of them carrying off uh, even small deer, as hard as that is to imagine. But you can definitely see these creatures with their strong talons able to, to do some tremendous things, dominating the world, dominating the sky, the eagle is. And you see that in the Bible... God uses this imagery to describe various things, especially in talking about how he wants to cause us to be like eagles, to soar like eagles, to be renewed like eagles. Isaiah 40, 
great reference to this in verses 29 through 31. He gives power to the weak. And to those who have no might, he increases strength. Even the youths shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. But those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. I've seen in my own life how that phrase, waiting on the Lord, so many times that phrase has helped me make a better decision. I don't always make the right decision, but there are times I've made better decisions by thinking about that phrase, waiting on the Lord, waiting for Him, seeking Him first in life. And as he says here that when people live like that, you live a different life. Your life is enriched, enhanced, it's improved. And you're like an eagle. You dominate, you soar to levels you would have never found on your own. All because of the mercy of our God. And God, of course, is using this creature to persuade us. Now, immediately in Isaiah 40, he's talking to the Jews who were caught up in idolatry. And the prophet is saying, why are you doing this? Why are you serving some lifeless imagination of man? Why not serve the living and true God who sits above the circle of the earth, referencing things that man, centuries before man figured out what that was talking about, and yet it's already alive in the scriptures. But how God is our powerful creator, and he is incomparable to anything in this life. And how he can make you like an eagle to soar above. And so I just want to spend a few minutes this morning building on that thought of having wings like eagles. Because we sing it as we just referenced. But also it's a very vivid thought for us to have in our relationship with God. And there are several things about the eagle that I think are parallel and should be parallel at least with our walk with God that can really encourage us if we think about it. For instance, the strength of an eagle, that this is without question, and as we've already demonstrated, a very strong bird. And yet God has shown through times past how he wants his people to see him with the ability to give them strength. And I love what's said in Exodus chapter 9, and he does mention this especially in verse 4, but notice this with me in Exodus chapter 19, I should say, I'm sorry. Exodus 19. And he's talking to people who are coming out of Egypt, okay, and they're about to enter into a covenant with God at Mount Sinai, and that's where they're assembled at this point. And Moses is going up to get the law and the covenant. But notice the language. Exodus chapter 19, in verse 3, beginning, Moses went up to God, and the Lord called to him from the mountain, saying... Thus you shall say to the house of Jacob and tell the children of Israel, You have seen what I did to the Egyptians and how I bore you on eagles' wings and brought you to myself. Now therefore, if you will indeed obey my voice and keep my covenant, then you shall be a special treasure to me above all people, for all the earth is mine, and you shall be to me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation." These are the words which you shall speak to the children of Israel. So Moses was getting this message. He was supposed to take it back to the people who were assembled there around the mountain. And the first thing God wanted them to know was you, you saw what I did to these people. I, I, I defeated your enemy, the Egyptians. I carried you out and I didn't do this in a manner that was weak and burdensome. I, you soared out of there. You soared out of there in a, a, a majestic way on the wings of eagles because I made it possible. Now he's saying, okay, now reign committed to me, stay true to me, and we can have a wonderful life together is the implication of all that. But see the strength that God was appealing to with this bird. And yet I see the same message told us as God's people who are Christians, that he wants us to believe that we have great strength that we have the ability to endure great things because of our relationship with God. And that's how Christians should live. We should be able to bear some tremendous things, just like an eagle, because of our relationship with God. I have two verses 
to think about in light of this. And you know, you know this first one. Philippians chapter 4 in verse 13. I'm going to read for you. Philippians 4 and verse 13 where Paul says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Now what in the world was this brother talking about? His philosophy on life is, I can get through this. In fact, I can not only get through this, I can get through anything. Why, Paul? Because I have God who gives me strength. I don't have to face this alone. I don't have to meet this mountain and this fear by myself. I can know I can get over that mountain. I can go through this challenge because I have a God who gives people the ability to, to soar on the wings of eagles. I have a God who gives me strength to get through today's challenges. In Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 10, in this great context of Paul telling Christians to put on the Christian armor, okay, don't try and live this life alone apart from God. He gives you certain things to apply in your faith and in your character. You live by these things. But then he says in Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 10, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. So I can see that. I, that's not too hard for me to comprehend. That I can be a stronger person, not because of just me making up my mind to be stronger, but rather I can be a stronger person the closer I get to God. The more I stay with him, the more I lean on him, rely on him, let him deliver me from Egyptian bondage. And let me stay near his word in obedience and in faith and love and devotion. As long as I stay near God, there is nothing that the devil can throw at me that I cannot endure, that I cannot handle, and that I cannot overcome because of this powerful God who is ready to guide me. Is that not inspiring? Is that not a message that just, okay, let's do this. I can do this. And that's the message, not from me, but from God. In looking back, of all things, at this wonderful, majestic creature. But that's not all. There are some other neat features about this bird that can help us. Do you realize that this bird flies higher than any other bird? The eagle flies the highest of all of the creatures God has made. The eagle goes the highest, which is tremendous. It can use those giant wings to spread and actually use the thermal updrafts and the wind currents near storms to soar to levels that no other creature has ever been able to go. The eagle has gone the highest of all of God's creatures. You, you can read about this. It's fascinating how even you can look at how of all the creatures that flee a storm, the eagle actually flies toward the storm. And the reason it flies toward the storm is because of these updrafts. And they're just able to spread those wings and they can shoot up sometimes 60,000 feet in the air. You realize you only fly at 30,000 feet? And so an eagle is able to go twice that potentially because of this massive wingspan and because of its ability to use these updrafts to soar high above the earth. And the reason for that would be for traveling great distances. They can get up there and they can just cruise and go farther than any other, any other animal. It's fascinating to think about. I've read of reports where pilots have seen birds, eagles, just shooting straight up. Can you imagine flying and seeing a bird just shooting straight up? flying on, the, on, on, the, on these updrafts. Tremendous. So it doesn't run from the storm. It flies toward the storm because of its ability to use the storm to its advantage. Building on the idea of an eagle flying, there are many references to this. I just want to refer to one where he says in regard to not being covetous. Why would you set your eyes on that which is not? Proverbs 23 and verse 5. For riches certainly make themselves wings. They fly away like an eagle toward heaven. So you can even see the imagery there of, of building on the idea of the soaring nature of this bird. Now here he's saying, look, why, why are you living for things? Stuff is going to fly away from you. 
Just like an eagle flies to heaven, your stuff's going to fly away from you. Why, why live for this world alone? Makes no sense. But I, I see the point there of it flying higher than all other creatures. And to me, that's a good parallel about how we should be as Christians. That the Bible is actually teaching us not to run from the storm. The Bible is actually teaching us to go toward the storm or at least look for moments of adversity and to count it all joy when you come into adversity. James chapter 1 and verse 2. Why? Because we love pain? Because we love being rebuked or chastened? Is that why? No. It's because of what the storm can do for you. That it's the moment of loss, the moment of adversity, the, the moment where you're tested beyond anything you can see at the moment. When you're tested, everything within you is tested. It's in those moments, especially when there's a deliverance and you're soaring as a result of that, you realize, okay, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. That I didn't need to fear this trial. I didn't need to fear this loss. I didn't need to ref fear this pruning because I'm actually going to bear more fruit, and I am bearing more fruit. I am more patient. I am more godly. I am more focused. I am less dependent on myself and more dependent on God. And the things that get us there are adversity, the trials, the loss. That's what God is saying. And he's saying you, you, can, do, you can spread those wings and you can fly to a level you could not fly without the adversity. That's the challenge God wants us to see. Notice this with me in 2 Corinthians chapter 12. This is how Paul saw it. Paul saw those storms of life as thermal updrafts, as moments to rise above himself. In 2 Corinthians chapter 12, I need to remember this, in verses 8 through 10. Speaking of his thorn in the flesh, of course, he's saying, Concerning this thing, I pleaded with the Lord three times that it might depart from me. And he said, My grace is sufficient for you, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, most gladly, I will rather boast in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities and in reproaches and needs and persecutions and distresses for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then I am strong. And that, my friends, is a very good thought for us to remember. And so the bird flies higher than others. The eagle, as the scripture shows, is able to renew its strength. Now you'll see this a couple times in the word of God. Where he's saying, look, he's able to make people have their strength renewed like an eagle. And the best I can tell is that this bird will go through a process of losing its feathers, even in its old age, in, in replacing the feathers and how it is a sign of maturity a lot of times you can see this especially in the first five years I read that of how it's transitioning into this more mature creature but then of course referring to the fact how these eagle feathers will be replaced as the bird continues to age and the reason for that is for the renewed strength that comes from that well I see that and I see the parallel with us as Christians. That God wants us to be renewed. That he doesn't want us to grow and plateau and just stay there. He wants us to keep growing, keep evolving, keep maturing, keep putting off the old and putting on the new. There's a constant cycle of development and pressing forward to a different person. Keep striving for the ideal. Keep striving for the perfect, perfect image of Christ. Keep striving to be more like Him. Colossians chapter 3 says this. I read in Colossians chapter 3 and verses 8 through 10. You're talking about being renewed. Think of this. It says in verse 8, Colossians 3, But now you yourselves are to put off all these, anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, Filthy language out of your mouth? Okay, nobody's going to soar with that. Nobody's going to reach the higher levels of life living like that. So we've got to get rid of that. But we don't just get rid of our feathers. They're replaced with newer feathers. 
Do not lie to one another. In verse 9, since you have put off the old man with his deeds and put on the new man who is renewed in knowledge according to the image of him who created him, where there is neither Greek nor Jew, circumcised nor uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave nor free, but Christ is all and in all. And so we grow. And we keep growing. I love what this one man said many years ago. Beloved, have you ever thought that someday you will not have anything to try you or anyone to vex you again? There will be no opportunity in heaven to learn or to show the spirit of patience and forbearance and long-suffering. If you were to practice these things, it must be now. And that's true. If I'm going to live by faith, I can only do this now. If I'm going to live by perseverance and, and patience and proving my devotion to the Lord in suffering and in self-denial, it's here, it's now in the realm of loss. And as we can see, he gives us the ability to be replenished spiritually by changing our thinking. Therefore, we do not lose heart, even though the outward man is perishing, the inward man is being renewed day by day. Let me, let me, let me ask this, so I should ask this. What does it mean to be renewed? How, how do you renew yourself every day? Paul says he dies daily. Every day I make this commitment to deny myself what I, what I want versus what God wants, and I continue to die, crucify that old man. But he says here we renew ourselves by changing our thinking. It's in our mind. Let me ask you this. How do you improve your mind? How do you become more spiritually minded? How do you become more focused? Well, I can promise you this. As a result of hearing the things you've heard this morning, participated in, and even things like we're reading right now, you're a better person. You're more focused. I'm more focused. Okay, let's, let's, let's stay focused in living for God. But what did that? Words. Words of God. The Word of God gives us that power and that focus. And you know what? That's why we need to be at services. We've all been reminded of that over this last year of, of confinement, not being able to be here. Listen, this, this is for our benefit to be here. It's to help us. God set this up not to torture us. He set this up to make us better, to, strong, to strengthen us. So you need to be here. You need to be at Bible. You missed a good one this morning. Bible class. You need to be here for worship. You need to be here tonight. You need to be here Wednesday night. How? Why? To renew your mind. It's not a, you're not losing anything. You're gaining something by gathering to worship. It's not, you're not being deprived of something in this life. You're finding something better, more enhanced. You're finding something from God. It's His will. It's His mind. And so that's how God strengthens us. That's how He renews us. And friends, we have to be committed to this type of life. You know what? The Bible says this. Now listen to this. If you faint in the day of adversity, your strength is small. That's what the Bible says. It's your fault. <laughs> That's what he's saying. Proverbs 24 and verse 10. If you faint, if you give up when things are hard, you're, you're a weak person. And God doesn't want us to be weak. There's no need for us to be weak. Because we can soar and we can be strong like an eagle. Let me say one last thing, if I may. Because this was just too cool to leave out. I almost left it out, but it's just too cool to leave out. And that's this last feature of this bird. And that is, it makes its nest high above the earth. For the most part, that's what an eagle will do. Now, you can even see this referenced a couple of different times in the Word of God. You have Job mentioned, or mentioned in Job 39, 27, does the eagle mount up at your command and make its nest on high? Obadiah, verse 4. There's only one chapter, but Obadiah, verse 4. Though you ascend as high as the eagle, and though you set your nest among the stars. Now think about that. This bird, for the most part, is going to place its nest higher than any other creature. It's nest. Now what's a nest for? And why would this creature build its nest so far above the earth? And 
Why did God set it up that way? And what, why is God referencing this in these verses? And I'm hoping we can see the point that a good parallel for us would be that we are to live above the earth. We're in this world, but we're not of this world. We're living closer to God. Our nest is settled in the stars, closer to God. And we as Christians are to live for and with God. That's why we're here. We are here for one purpose, God. We still have time for one purpose, God. To glorify God, draw closer to God, do God's will while we are here. And the reason we do that is because our nest is near God. Our, our rest is. It's our sanctuary. Our home is with God. Colossians chapter 3, notice this. The last verses I'll read for us this morning. Colossians chapter 3. In verse 1 beginning. If then you were raised with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ is, sitting at the right hand of God. Set your mind on things above, not on things on the earth. For you died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is also our life, appears, then you also will appear with Him in glory. And so he says, look, you've been raised to newness of life. You've come up from baptism, and you've You've, you're forgiven. You start all over in your life, especially with God. All right, now that you've been raised to life, you start living for heaven. Now, what got us in trouble is we live for this world. You know, we live for the pleasures of life, the benefits of this life alone, even apart from God, and that's what brought shame and darkness and guilt and separation from God. All right, well, now we're a new person. And so we're living to be with God in heaven. But here's the thing. What happens when this life falls apart? You know, when so many things happen to us that we would rather not happen, what do we do? Well, we set our mind on things above. And this is more than just a really neat observation in parallel with the bird. This is more than that. This is the way you and I are going to get through the challenges of life. It's because we don't live for this world. We live for the next. We live to be with God. And what that means is regardless of what men do to us or think of us or say about us or the threats that men pose to us, it's okay because we live for God's approval. And we live to be with Him in the next life. It's not about this life. It's in the next life. And here's how, here's how real this can be in a moment's notice. I... I heard recently uh, about an eldership at a church that had to take a stand against one of its members who would not repent of homosexuality. And she just would not repent. Well, these men had no choice but to do what God said to do. And you and I both know what God says to do. 1 Corinthians chapter 5, when it comes to sexual morality and a Christian won't repent, we have no alternative but to rebuke and mark and avoid the Christian who won't repent. Now, we all struggle with sin. We all do. But when it comes to rebellion, the church, and especially the elders, have no alternative but to do God's will. And so do we as God's people. And so they did this. They marked and avoided this person who would not repent of homosexuality. And It doesn't matter what the sin is. That's, sin is sin. And they wouldn't repent of it. Well, guess what happened? That the person who was withdrawn from, took the letter that she had received from these elders and posted it online. And that thing has been circulated. Circulated so much that it got to the screen of those who are very active in the LGBTQT community. Well, now that community, the leaders in that community are leading legal actions against that eldership for pr promoting hate crimes, hate crimes against this woman. And now these men have their jobs threatened, they have their livelihoods threatened, their property threatened, all this pressure from society. You don't think this is real and you don't think this can happen to us in some way? 
Do you not think that everything that has happened over this last year is training us and preparing us for greater threats to our faith? It can happen. It can happen here. But how do Christians get through that? And I pray these men do the right thing and not compromise God's will. But how do you get through that? How do you endure such great threats to your faith? That right there. Your nest is not here. Your nest is close to God. You stay close to God. You live for God. You live for the next life because you're seeking that life. This is real. And it needs to be permanent in our thinking that we live to be with God. And that's just too important of a point to leave out. So I share these thoughts. You've listened very patiently, and I thank you for that. But God does tell us to look at this bird and admire certain things about it. The strength, its ability to fly higher than all other creatures, how it renews its strength, and of course, how it sets its home close to God. And may God give you and me the ability to do that this morning. It could be that you're here and you're not a child of God. We encourage you to rise out of sin. You can do it. And it's not through us, but it's through the one that we remembered a while ago and sacrificing himself for our sins. And as was stated so clearly, being raised from the dead to give us hope. And so we hope that if you're ready to become a Christian, that you will obey that beautiful gospel, die to your sins, be buried with him in baptism, and raised to walk in newness of life. Do you have the courage to do that? Do you have the courage to confess your faith that I believe Jesus Christ is the Son of God? Well, we encourage you to obey that beautiful plan this morning. Or if you need to do something in a public way, in reaching out and finding strength or in making things right, please come to God as we stand and sing.